I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. A good question was asked by a viewer about the video I had posted regarding the replacement of the ballast in my kitchen's fluorescent light fixture. Now, they were attempting to replace the ballast in their fixture, but they had a slight problem. The new ballast had fewer wires than the old one did. Now, I did ask, you know, does the ballast say what type it is? And they also replied that it said instant start, but wasn't sure, you know, what it meant. And wanted to know if it could still be used, you know, are they better, you know, what's the difference, and so forth. Now, let me explain how the process works. Now, a fluorescent tube is a form of a gas discharge lamp. Now, it generates light through an electric discharge in a gas-filled tube. The ballast is used to ionize this gas inside the fluorescent tube. Then it creates an arc discharge and controls the current flowing through the tube. Now, for the process to start, the gas inside the tube needs to be ionized. Inside the tube, you have mercury vapor, which is used to create the ultraviolet light that in turn, the phosphorus will convert into visible light. Next, you have argon, xenon, uh, neon, uh, krypton. Uh, now, these gases are often added to the tube to reduce the amount of voltage needed to start the process. Now, they also provide the right environment for the electrical discharge to occur efficiently. Now, the filament on each end of the bulb needs to be heated to the temperature that will release the electrons into the gas. Now this is known as preheating the bulb. The process is called thermionic emission. This initial electron flow helps create the plasma arc needed for the gas to discharge to occur. Next, the ballast creates a high voltage pulse known as striking the gas. The voltage can range anywhere between 200 to 600 volts. Now, if you get the larger bulbs, they can require up to 1,000 volts to get the bulb to start up. Now, once the gas is ionized, electricity will flow from one end of the bulb to the other, and this generates the light. In turn, the voltage will then drop to a level to maintain the arc. Now, the type of ballast determines how the lamp will start, plus it also affects the bulb's, life, the bulb's lifespan. The two most common types of ballast are instant start and rapid start. Now, an instant start ballast is like rapid starts. I mean, they are similar, except for one major difference. An instant start ballast does not preheat the filaments, but they are more energy efficient. Now, for rapid start ballasts, they do improve longevity and they preheat the filaments. Now, what's, the, the reason this is important is because with instant start ballasts, especially when the lights are frequently turned on and off throughout the day, the bulbs can be shortened by one half. And this is due to the stress on the filament during a strike when not preheating the filaments. When an instant start ballast strikes the gas, the material that makes up the filament's coating is sputtered off the electrodes. This is caused by the impact of electrons and heavy ions within the tube. Now, this side effect can shorten the bulb's life by one half compared to using a rapid start ballast. Now, a t the typical lifespan of a linear fluorescent tube is generally 7,000 to 15,000 hours of use. Now, this can vary based on the ballast operation and performance and the frequent on-off cycles. Now, as the fluorescent bulb or tube reaches its end of life, you'll notice that the ends of the tube will darken. Now, this is the result from the coating of the filament, or the electrode, sputtering and coating the glass. 
The wiring also differs between a, diff a rapid start and an end to start ballast, as you see here. The top is the typical wiring for the rapid start ballast. For a typical two bulb fixture, you have a pair of blue wires for one bulb and a pair of red wires for the second bulb. Then you have a pair of yellow wires that connect to the two bulbs at the other end. This configuration allows for the filaments to be preheated prior to striking the gas. Now, since most fluorescent tubes use bipin connections for the bulbs, an instant start can still be used. The bottom is a typical wiring when using an instant start ballast. You only have one blue wire for one bulb, another blue wire for the second bulb, and then you have the red wire that connects to the bulbs at the other end. Finally, uh, instant start ballast should only be used where the lights are uh, on for extended periods of time. Uh, this helps to increase the lifespan of the bulbs. Uh, if you have security lightings, uh, if, it's a sh if, if it's your workshop, uh, classrooms, anywhere that the light stays on for long periods of time. Now for the rapid start ballast, now these are best suited for areas where the lights are frequently turned on and off. Uh, these are things such as garages, uh, your kitchen, your basement, uh, anywhere that in your home that uses a uh, fluorescent lighting that regularly turns on and off, this is what you want to use, a rapid start ballast. Now when you're selecting your ballast, it must support the number of bulbs, the bulb type, and, and the bulb wattage. Now, if you have the old ballast, it should have a lot of that information on it, but that's going to depend on how old it is. Now, the T8 bulbs, now keep this in mind, the T8 bulbs are smaller in diameter than the T12 bulbs. Now, if the ballast is for the home, you want to make sure that the ballast does say residential use. You don't want to use the commercial ones because those are designed for commercial uh, lighting and stuff. Now the new ballast should also list its compatible bulb types and its bulb wattage with the voltage requirements that it needs because some of them will use the 120 volt, others will use 277 or 240. And you also want to make sure that it does support the, num the right number of bulbs. Now if you're not sure about the bulbs, you can always look on the end of the bulbs. The bulbs will also list their type and their wattage at one of the ends of the bulbs. Well, I am your host, Mr. Fixit. I do hope that this video was informative to help you distinguish between the instant start and the rapid start ballast so you'll know which one to use when you need to replace your fixture. Now, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you click on that notification icon to make sure that you do get notified whenever I upload a new video. And also, don't forget to click like on that video. Now, at the end of this video, I am going to show a link to the previous video that this was referenced to to show you how to replace these uh, ballasts in a fluorescent light fixture. So stay tuned and hope to see you there. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.